Hi everyone, this is the Online Audio Club. This is our first session of the new year and I'm starting with answering questions from you. And uh, I have a question from Tiago and he asked, what can we do when we want to listen to low levels, but we do not have high efficiency speakers. So we only have low efficiency speakers. So, and he also asked a couple specific questions. Uh, such as what sort of crossover modifications we can do to help our low sensitivity speakers and uh, how to choose cables, speaker cables, interconnect, power cords uh, for better detail level and what gauge, resistance, capacitance and shielding and geometry does to a cable so how how you can select a cable by knowing these uh, parameters of the cable so what to look for and also he had another question isolation fit so we are going to look at these uh, three topics now and the first one is with isolation fit and yes Tiago you are, I completely agree with you in my experience isolation fit they they do change the sound and they they give a certain coloration to the sound in most cases so it's not just as people would think that they make the sound better or they don't do any sort of difference according to others but they they change the sound of the system and usually the more uh, high-tech uh, uh, an isolation fit is the more high-tech the sound will be as well and uh, and every isolation fit works uh, and, and slightly differently and gives their own coloration to the sound and uh, some what they do actually what all of them do is that they uh, modify the equipment resonance so if you have your speakers of course the speakers resonate a lot because the cone moves a lot and, and those cone movements we also translate to cabinet vibrations and, and you want to have your cabinet sit at a relatively stable position because if the cabinet is vibrating and moving then the next sound wave that's generated by your uh, speaker cabinet will be slightly coming from a slightly different position because of these vibrations and that will mess the sound and that's why they are like the, the steel points feet which, which uh, narrow down to a point for example uh, those ones like, like trans uh, make sure that the vibrations uh, come from a wide base to a narrow base and uh, that, that keeps your speakers or at, at the same position and there are other feet which um, which have uh, like a damping material inside it looks like a softer or harder rubber inside and that works because the rubber is amorphous so it, it uh, absorbs some of the vibration and transforms it to heat and uh, these also these have a slightly different uh, colorations compared to those which are like metallic feet and they come to a, a, a point and also this phenomenon happens with, uh, with your uh, amplifiers, preamps and source components as well. They also have resonances, they resonate, especially CD transports are really subject to and sensitive to resonances because as the, as the CD spins, the spinning itself creates resonance and, and also the acoustic resonance is coupled by the chassis to the CD mechanism they they give enough extra resonance so the laser will have more difficult time to read the data and uh, in, if you are in the computer world uh, in that case this doesn't matter at all because then you just uh, always have error correction from reading from a CD or Blu-ray and when the error correction doesn't match up it reads it again and it, it will be uh, one percent slower or two percent because that's maybe uh, how much errors you have on the average and uh, and the user will not notice it as a diminishing in the speed 
but uh, if it's part of a CD transport or a Blu-ray transport, then every time uh, your your laser has to move back, that sends a spike, uh, an electric spike, that movement of the head, and also an electromagnetic spike. So when the laser focuses, the, then uh, the magnet generates its magnetic field, and all of these will affect the those components which translate your music from the an, from the digital to the analog domain and they will creep up as added noise uh, by the time it reaches analog so that's why it's absolutely crucial how you isolate uh, your cd transport and uh, my mentor he he was the number one expert on isolation fit I think he tried out every existing isolation fit on the planet and not just them but, but in all of their combinations uh, and uh, towards the end of his life uh, he, he came to notice and, and I did these experiments with him too that the best isolation fit uh, would, is a spruce so, so eventually uh, what you can do you can to to change the uh, acoustic signature of your equipment is you can either use isolation feet which will uh, push it towards usually towards more a higher detail level and uh, often to a more uh, clinical presentation uh, but this can be also achieved by using uh, raw materials so when the companies use these products they, they use the same principles uh, as, as I will explain now and put it into a product but you can use your principle by yourself too and it will not look as fancy if you put a block of spruce under your uh, CD player but it will be just as effective if you know what you are doing and, and why, why spruce? you can use also any other type not just any but many other types of uh, wood as well and i will talk a little bit about this so so here i have uh, a board of spruce and as you can see it it looks like pine but it's a much higher density so you can see all of these uh, layers and and there's like very small distance between them so it means that as, as the, the tree aged every one of these lines shows one year of change and it's because uh, as the tree grows when the tree grows faster you have these uh, wider whitish bands and when when it's it's winter time and the tree grows very slow then you have these really dense uh, and dark lines and the closer these lines are the better the uh, mechanical properties are of the wood so it means that if, if, if this piece of wood gets subject to a resonance then because of these dense layers it will resonate very clearly and if it had these layers as very thick layers then the resonances would splatter up and, and, and create all sorts of uh, ghost effects and, uh, and, and it's, it, it's not... Um, by chance that that we arrive to using spruce it's because spruce is used for making music instrument so if you are using any kind of instrument grade wood you can use it as isolation feet uh, and uh, for that you just basically need to like cut up a piece of, uh, of of the spruce and actually like cut like three blocks and place them under your cd transport and uh, place it under the chassis of the transport, not under the, the foot of the CD that, that it comes with, with those plastic feet, but directly on, on the chassis and, and just observe what changes do you hear in the sound. You should hear quite a bit of change if, if your system can handle it. If you don't hear much of a change, it, it, it's usually an indication that, that your the rest of the chain is not sensitive at all to, to, to changes. So it means that with your amplification and cabling and speakers, you have a really, really long way to go because uh, if there's a change in the signal, it, it does not register. It, it doesn't pick it up. So, 
So anyway, so one thing that where, where the isolation fit make a lot of difference is on your source components. So if you have a CD transport and also under your speakers. So you can put these uh, little feet under your, your speaker as well. And you can also use any other uh, type of uh, wood, which, which is like a harder density wood. So for example, you can use something like an ebony or coco bolo, or uh, you, can, you can even try redwood or pine or, or, or oak or walnut, cherry wood. Uh, any kind of wood which is uh, e either like dense wood or, or it, it has uh, lots of these uh, age rings very close to each other. If it's like a really poor quality wood like poplar or something like that, then that, that will not help at all. But uh, experiment with wood under your speakers and under your uh, source material and it will make a big difference. If you use streamers, then uh, Messing with food under the streamers is won't make usually such a big difference because they have much greater issues. So, so if you see that uh, with your streamer you put it on feet and you hear a difference, that means that your streamer is is pretty good and you have fixed major issues. But, but if there are big issues with the power supply and cabling, then then feet under your uh, streamer or, or putting your laptop on it. it probably won't make any difference whatsoever and uh, putting your amplifier on uh, on different feet will make the least difference compared to any other component and um, but actually for for solid state amplifiers you might get a bigger response because solid state is is really subject and sensitive to any kind of vibrations so so I really recommend trying out spruce or if you don't find spruce you can also use pine wood just just really uh, find so look for those lines and then if you see like uh, uh, lo lots of dense lines then then get that wood and just chop it off chop it up maybe like uh, one inch uh, thick three four inch long pieces and and put three or four under your uh, amplifier for tubes if if it's for preamps they are more sensitive to feed than the amps and that's because uh, uh, also for solid state amps if you have a really heavy amplifier that is a little bit usually less sensitive to vibrations because it has its own mass so so if your piece of equipment has a big mass then uh, that takes care of quite a bit of resonances but you can still put them on on spruce feet and i will talk much more about spruce feet because there's much more that you can do with spruce but then you need bigger boards of spruce and not just these tiny feet so for a, a third option for equipment feet uh, and then is the cheapest option just pick up pumistone and that's the stuff that you can use to uh, rub your feet or <laughs> scrub the toilet bowl. And uh, this is like a really junk version of it that we use on the toilet bowl. There, I just put it on so that you know what am I talking about. Uh, but uh, there's a pumice stone which is uh, much more dense try to get that because that's that's way better so this basic pumice stone barely does anything at all but try to find a pumice stone which is like a, a more white than gray and has really really tiny holes in it so it has a much more compact structure and uh, break this up to like a centimeter by centimeter by centimeter cubes and put it under your cd transport and Probably this will be the maybe the best fit that, that you can try for your CDs and, and uh, I tried this pumice stone and then under the micro mega my world player it worked better than anything that you can buy for any money. So another thing uh, that you can try is rutilated quartz, but I will talk about this a little bit later. Uh, I think this is gone here. So at this point, let's jump to cable choices. 
and uh, for cables uh, like uh, connecting your low level source to your amplifier or, or uh, uh, to your preamp if the cable is shielded uh, that that's a double-edged sword because shielding protects from uh, EMI and RFI so if, if there's like a lot of cell phone users in your area you have Wi-Fi there's you have a bunch of Bluetooth devices a lot of uh, LED lights a uh, lot of uh, utilities then the shielding will be very beneficial for you to cut out all the noise that they inject to the system but the problem with shielding is shielding also introduces a lot of extra capacitance to your interconnect and it cuts down a lot of low level detail. So, so ultimately shielded cables, uh, it depends on the shielding too, but in general if it's a shielded cable then it will not have low level listening. Uh, try to find cables that have like twisted pairs of wires running without a shield and those will suit in general the low level listening much better than a heavily shielded cable or if it has a light shield that can work well at a low listening level but if, if it's like a triple shielded uh, cable then it will absolutely kill the low level detail and also, apart from shielding, uh, or, or the lack of shielding, or just very light shielding, go for as low capacitance as possible. Because capacitance, it's, it's not only cutting off your top end, but it's also taking away from the detail level. And when we look at the gauge of your interconnects, uh, then uh, if it's heavy gauge, it will mean that it, it will be able to handle better dynamics and, and more bass. And uh, the reverse is true. If your cable, your, your interconnect is really skinny, let's say like gauge 40, then it will be quite thin sounding. But on the other hand, uh, your, the perceived detail level will be higher with a really skinny interconnect, like a gauge 40 wire but but your base response will be i would say like moderately to severely compromised and and if you just use like a really heavy gauge wire but it's not of a good quality wire then uh, you will have a lot of slam a lot of uh, dynamic impact but uh, you will not hear the fine nuances fine detail levels but the benefit will be if you listen to it at low level, you will still hear a better bass, better dynamic impact, and, and the sound stage will not collapse uh, so easily if, if, if all your wires are heavy gauge. And I would say the most, uh, probably the first critical component is the speaker, uh, sorry, the power cord. Uh, because that's where your electricity comes in for your system so if your power cord is skinny gauge then uh, then you will not enjoy dynamics and power handling uh, and then looking for the quality of the speaker cable or interconnect or power cord if it's oxygen free copper then you will hear much more into the lower detail level so if you turn the volume down and you listen to quietly if it's OFC copper you will hear much better detail level compared to just a basic cable and the OCC copper that that's a form of the OFC it means the ono continuous casting so for copper cables every copper looks like a piece of wire but when you look at it under a microscope it's it's made of uh, crystals so it looks like bits of crystals in it and the OCC copper it's it's cast in a way so that those crystals are much longer than the ones which are made by making copper uh, the standard way and when you have longer crystals that's when uh, it makes a really big difference you can really hear this with cartridges if you have turntables if if you have a, a cartridge that uses OCC copper that has a tremendously higher detail level compared to a 
another cartridge that that has as its uh, buyer internal wiring just plain OFC copper and also if you use cryogenic treatment uh, that also adds a lot of extra fine detail handling to your cable but you have to know about cryogenics is that what it does uh, I do cryogenics myself too and uh, so I just cryo everything that I have, like all my resistors and uh, most of the capacitors, transformers, chokes, and so on, wires, I cryo them. But, so when you cryo something, then uh, that forces the oxygen, the dissolved oxygen from within uh, the, the crystal structure to go out, to leave uh, your conductor. And much of that oxygen is like close to the surface and uh, and and when you use your cable then that oxygen as, as as the current runs through the copper and meets these oxygen atoms you will find uh, rapid oxidation at these uh, parts so, and when oxidation builds up that's that's why your cables burn out over time so there's not just the phenomenon of burning cables in but cables will burn out as well and if you cryo something then you will delay this burn out time uh, to much later period but uh, cryogenics works for about a year so after one year you have to recryo again because uh, during a year's period the oxygen will all also start to attack your your wires and, and you need to just continue to refresh it and uh, if you think that that's humbug it's not humbug that's what they're using for the airplanes so like uh, for the landing gear of the airplanes the axles they take it out every year and they cryogenically treat it so so in the airplane industry they use this process and they know that you have to repeat this every year and that's that's how long it lasts and also if you are a car racer uh, I have a friend of mine and, and he, he builds drug racing cars and his cars are the fastest in the world, not just anywhere. So he's, I'm not talking someone who never seen a race car in his life, but, but, but of the person who builds the fastest ever. And, uh, and, he, and they do cryo uh, the engine parts after every race. And, and, and also <laughs> we can benefit from this. If, if you can do such a thing but uh, of course most people do not have access to cryogenics uh, but you have a freezer so what you can do is uh, you can take your interconnect cable put it in a ziploc bag and put it in your freezer minus 20 degrees celsius keep it there for a week and then plug it in your system and give it a listen you will hear partially the effects of cryogenic treatment but it will go away within an hour or so so uh, so if you can hear that uh, just report about it and uh, so that that's what gives you an indication what will happen if you cryogenically treat something but uh, in in the case if it's just minus 20 that's just a temporary effect but if you go much uh, colder temperatures then it will uh, stay for longer and if you want to go for uh, silver cables uh, silver is the one that will give you an avalanche of uh, extremely low detail level so if you want to listen to low levels and you have low efficiency speaker I would recommend to change everything to silver every wiring but that's I would say probably not really doable and also extremely expensive uh, but I would say the only viable choice for that is DIY method to build your cables yourself I would recommend because the biggest change is the power cord but but it's not really doable because you need to make it at least like gauge 12 or heavier but then that will be like really expensive or really difficult to make and uh, and it's really dangerous because uh, just do, do not play with the um, power I do it for myself but I, I have built hundreds of power cords and so I know that I don't have 
I like joking with my stuff because I have the experience but if you never build power cables before and you are just getting into DIY or thinking about it then do not try with that but you can uh, start off with interconnects and you can get by uh, with an, a total gauge of 26 for example you use four runs of uh, counterclockwise twist of uh, gauge 32 dead soft silver wire and uh, this would be a topic for uh, for a full video or maybe a series on how to make your own a silver interconnect and uh, it's you can make them for a remarkable little amount of money and and they will be extremely good and uh, for the same thing for speaker cable uh, try to use gauge 12 or heavier like gauge 11 or gauge 10 and if you can buy wire your speakers that will help the low level detail retrieval and uh, the best way uh, the best speaker cable is just run the, the two wires if you can find cables like that where the positive and the negative runs are separate just keep them separate if you keep the, the positive and the negative 10 inches apart like 25 centimeters apart or further then there's no interaction between the two and i have tried out all sorts of configuration and uh, and and that's the best for speaker cables just keep them apart from each other and then there's no capacitive coupling between them and and you will be surprised that they pick up much less noise than you would think so uh, that would not be a good idea for uh, interconnects because at low level uh, it is really uh, sensitive to high frequency noise pickup like the megahertz and gigahertz range uh, but but at the speaker level if it picks up megahertz gigahertz level noise it it it's it doesn't affect it as much and you will gain much more by the ultra low capacitance and also for speaker cable what you can do and why this uh, distancing out the wires will work is if you use the proper length because uh, speaker wires are really sensitive to uh, the radio channels that we have like the uh, about the 100 megahertz uh, or so range and uh, and just avoid one meter two meter four meter eight meter and 50 centimeter length so unfortunately this is the length that most uh, manufacturers make their products like a two meter speaker cable but if you can absolutely avoid that because these are antennas and they are tuned to pick up the most noise from the environment try to go for a 35 centimeter long cable if you can get by with such short or 75 centimeter 1.5 meter 3 meter 6 meter and so on so try to use these lengths because they will not they will reject more about 90 percent of the noise that that cables pick up due to their length so for cables being either interconnect or speaker cable one crucial aspect is the length and if it's at the length that it picks up most of the em that's floating in the air then yes you have an antenna that picks up the junk but if you have something that's not an antenna for most of the junk then you will be much happier and for ferrites uh, try to avoid ferrite beads on the on your cables uh, if you put them on power cord yes they will filter out some of the noise that comes from the power but they will cut down your dynamics a lot so it's like uh, putting your uh, your system your amplifier on on, a, on an isolation supply on the power an extra uh, power cleaner unit it will cut the dynamics uh, noticeably and the same thing if you put it on your speaker cable or interconnect yes it will cut down some of the interference but it will severely decrease the low level retrieval so if you want to listen to at uh, a, a low volume if you put ferrite beads on it uh, yes it will be cleaner but you will be missing about 30 percent of the information content that's on the on your source however ferrite beads are really good if you put them on anything that's not your audio system 
So put them on your lamp cord, on your uh, computer power cord, on your freezer, on your microwave, on your oven, everything. Put the ferrite beads on everything you can and put it on both ends of the power cords. So at that end where you plug it to the appliance and the other end where it's plugged into the wall, one bead at each end. You know, there are those clip-on ferrite beads, just, just litter them everywhere. I have done tremendous amount of experimentation with ferrite beads. I probably have like 30 kilogram of diverse ferrite beads. And you know, there are these tiny critters. And if you have 30 kilos, it means that you have like just immense amounts of this stuff. So yes, I tried them out in every possible combination and, and I can report to you, put them everywhere but your stereo gear. And uh, there's uh, another uh, source that that uh, was asked is uh, how about cable mixing and matching uh, these are some uh, that I found if that these are compatible like Kimber harmonic technologies and audio quest cables are compatible with each other and if you are DIYing then uh, and you use a uh, silver uh, the dead soft alloy anneal uh, uh, silver from Rio Grande uh, it's 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 really compatible, so you can mix and match all of these, and, and you will get a uh, good sound. And you can also use the aged sterling silver, uh, and if you make uh, interconnects or power cords, and and the rest of your system have these cables, it will still work out. But I have to add that it has to be aged sterling silver. When they draw the sterling silver. The sterling silver only has 92.5% uh, of silver in it and uh, and because of that that um, it's not so pure silver it's really rigid it's almost as uh, as strong as, as steel well it isn't but it feels like that so if you have like gauge 18 sterling silver then you will notice that that thing doesn't want to bend at all it will be a torture a nightmare to work with and that's why I do not recommend it because you will you will sweat blood trying to uh, to bend it into uh, configurations because it just doesn't bend. It's it, it has zero pliability. And also, if you buy it new, so like it was produced last year or maybe five years ago, it will have a very uh, very cold, very clinical sound and. And, and it will not be compatible at all with, with the Kimber or audio class. However, I have a bunch of uh, silver wire, which is about uh, gauge uh, 19, which is sterling silver. And, and it was drawn, I think, about 70 years ago. So it's like really, really ancient vintage sterling wire. And that sounds about as good as, as the dead soft alloy modern silver. But, but when I, I, I purchased the new, freshly drawn sterling silver, it's, it's a far cry, really far away from the fine silver. However, if you have, for example, MIT cable, then that fresh sterling silver sound would be compatible with the MIT sound. So if, if you have some MIT cables and you want to roll out some more DIY cables because you have uh, maybe just let's say an MIT power cord and you have just some basic uh, interconnects and speaker wire and if you want to roll out your DIY uh, interconnects and speaker cable then you can use uh, fresh sterling silver and then it will be compatible with the MIT sound uh, here I have some incompatibility issues so for example if you have MIT cables then do not buy Kimber or Harmony Technologies do not try to mix these brands because they will hate each other you will have a sound that's really unbalanced so also other thing if you have a uh, like Kimber cables everywhere and you want to change your interconnects do not change it to MIT because it will totally un unbalance the sound and the same thing one then hole is not compatible at all either with the, with the Kimber or Harmonic Technologies sound. And um, talking about Cardas cables, it's been a very long time since I ex experimented with Cardas uh, cables. 
I haven't used Cardas uh, interconnects or, or any f final products in ages uh, but uh, but I can tell you that as a finished product they are really uh, not compatible with uh, Kimber or or harmonic technologies and it's but it's not because of the Cardas wire so the Cardas wires are pretty good by themselves but the Cardas solder the solder that Cardas uses is is something that I found to be uh, it, it really kills the low level detail but this this has been a long time ago since I experimented with the Cardas solder uh, they they had several different kinds of solder I tried them all and uh, and I was hugely disappointed with all of them uh, it did not work for me it, it uh, I found it that it, it really destroys the uh, fine detail level and then the top level um, like the high frequencies but I would think that it, it works really well with the uh, solid state amplifiers which really need a, a helping hand to cut down the the high frequency nervousness and instability in the sound there I, I, I say that Cardas would work really well but also for if you have that that type of uh, issue that that you have uh, Cardas in your system and it sounds really good if you are going to go for silver cables you will be horrified with the sound because it will show that 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 your amplifier produces a lot of high frequency nasties which the Cardas suppresses and if you put in something that doesn't suppress that kind of uh, uh, nervousness then it will go through and you will blame the silver cable but no in I would say in every case the silver cable it it allows you to hear your equipment and copper cables they hide the defects and that's why is that it's because silver has a little bit better conductivity than copper but this by itself would not explain why silver is so much better uh, however the big difference between them is that uh, there is the uh, thing called electromagnetism and it means that uh, uh, if if there's a electricity flowing through a conductor that generates an a magnetic field but also if there's a magnetic field present that generates an electric electron flow and and silvers silver reacts to much lower level of magnetism than copper does that's that's the key difference between copper and silver and and they they do not mention this usually on the forums and that's why uh, if you have a silver in a transformer it makes a big difference because uh, if you subject copper to an electromagnetic field it will not pick up the low level magnetic fields but silver will pick it up so that's that's the big uh, thing why companies some companies use silver for transformer wire and another thing is that silver has much better crystal structure than copper and even a, an ono continuous cast copper doesn't have as good as a crystal structure as most silver wire do and and because of those uh, fractured uh, crystallines inside the the crystal boundaries act as minute rectifiers and and that's what what creates that uh, those coloration that that uh, copper introduces to the sound and uh, and that colorations serve to conceal a lot of the high frequency instabilities that that amplifiers provide so now our video is getting quite long now but anyway let's just uh, hammer on <laughs> And, uh, and go to the last bit, the crossover modifications. So here I just have an, uh, just picked uh, an ordinary crossover. So most uh, decent uh, hi-fi products, which are like a thousand dollar speaker or less, uh, have crossovers like this, uh, which is they have a, a film cap not not electrolytic but film so it's already a step up but but these are just really uh, low grade really cheap film capacitors so you you can change these to something better or much much better uh, they they have uh, fuses to protect uh, the uh, your 
sweeter from blowing up in case you have a toddler and the toddler cranks up the volume and it blows but if you if but these uh, fuses they really uh, cut down a lot of low level detail so if you want to listen to your speakers at, at low level just bypass the fuses so just put uh, the easiest thing that you can do if you have a friend who knows how to solder just solder a piece of wire from here to here to, to bypass the fuse or just take out the fuse and then just uh, solder a piece of uh, good quality wire that that's, that will remove this bottleneck from the sound and uh, instead of these uh, capacitors the cheapest thing that you can do as an upgrade is DC link film capacitors so the DC link technology that's polypropylene film caps and they they I will talk about them in another video but it's the cheapest way to upgrade your your uh, crossover and it will be a huge a, a gargantuan step up uh, you will be amazed uh, and I have a couple of brands listed here but I talk about this in a different video because now we are really running out by pushing the time limits here um, so I won't talk about the inductor on the board now but I will talk about the resistor because this will be if you are totally newbie on uh, and, and on, on uh, DIYing then this is my first recommendation to you that uh, in not just the DC link cap but change these resistors if you see resistors like this because for capacitors you might not be able to know whether the caps there are of higher quality or junk so so there might some expertise is needed there to determine whether you want to what you want to change them for but for resistors it's very easy if they look like this like a white ceramic uh, resistor with uh, these skinny wires change them because they 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 really destroy a lot of the sound so get a uh, caddock thick film resistors and use some good quality silver bearing solder to put them on and you will be amazed that uh, how much better uh, detail level your speakers will be able to handle at low low level listening and then this this is true for every speaker so high efficiency speakers will benefit from it but low efficiency speaker will benefit from them greatly as well and and you will hear uh so so if you if you change these caps and and these resistors here then you will have a a, a jump a several category level jump of the detail uh, level and and uh, and and the experience when you listen to it at both low level and high level as well um i have a lot of ex lots of things to talk about but we are now pushing 45 minutes so we'll go through these uh, in a different video so thank you for listening and i hope this gives a few ideas and answer questions and a happy music listening in the new year and i will follow up with a second video on the parts that i just jumped through